Fox News obtaining new video of the mess left behind after the standoff between federal agents and protesters at the Bundy Cattle Ranch in Nevada. William Lajeunesse is just back from the ranch. William? Well, the root of the dispute, of course, is the desert tortoise. A federal court gave the BLM authority to seize and impound Bundy's cattle to protect the tortoise. But the order did not say the agency could, as this video shows, destroy his water tanks, water lines, and fences. Bundy also blames the BLM for allegedly killing two prize bulls. If you notice, I'm inside this pen where that bull was shot. And if you look along the inside of this pen, there's no nothing where this pen has been bent. If you look on the ground, the post is still in the same spot. It hasn't even moved. It has, it's not like the bull was smashing this pen and trying to attack the people or anything. The pen is sitting here, hasn't moved, no damage whatsoever. Where was the danger in that bull? BLM Wranglers allegedly shot the bulls because they were dangerous and could gore their horses. Bundy's friends say that the white bull was shot five times. Nowhere in the court order that I saw does it say that they can destroy infrastructure, destroy um, corrals, tanks, um, desert environment, shoot cattle? Now, the BLM said this afternoon these are federal lands and they don't need permission to destroy illegal fences, water lines, etc., to restore the land to its natural state. But remember, Bundy doesn't even recognize federal authority. The government says he owes some $640 million in damages, and if he failed to pay, they would sell his cattle. Only we discovered a big problem. No one in Nevada would touch Bundy's cattle for fear of being blacklisted. The sale yards are very nervous about taking these, what has in the past been basically stolen cattle from the federal government. Documents show BLM paid a Utah Wrangler $966,000, almost a million dollars, to collect Bundy's cattle and reportedly $300,000 for a Utah auctioneer to sell them. What they didn't plan for is a letter from the governor of Utah saying that Bundy's cattle could not be shipped or sold in Utah. So, Megan, on Saturday, the BLM is stuck with cattle that it could not sell, despite already spending millions of dollars in an operation that didn't work. This is not over. The BLM says it will try to resolve the dispute administratively and judicially, though Bundy does not recognize their rights and remains in violation, as you know, of multiple court orders. Back to you. William, thank you. Well, new reaction tonight to the Bundy Ranch showdown, as critics suggest the federal response in Nevada was a case of overkill. And they say this is part of a larger pattern. They can throw an army of men around there, literally, with sniper rifles on guys just like you are, on people just like you are. Someday, they're going to throw that army of men around you. Today is the greatest day in my lifetime. I've lived 65 years. Government just keep taking more and more, more federal government. Today, that's for the free men of America right there, for them soldiers that died and fought for it. This right here is the best thing I've seen, the people taking their country back. Judge Andrew Napolitano is Fox News' senior judicial analyst and with me now, taking the country back. And, and we've heard so much about how the Bundys did not have the law on their side. They were trying to stand up for a principle. But, but more and more in the days after this, Judge, people are talking about how it got that far. And if you look deep into this ranching dispute, what, they, what the ranchers will tell you is this was the straw that broke the camel's back, that they feel this has been a culture of intimidation. And in fact, there was a piece in the Washington Times just today that used that term, culture of intimidation, seen in the standoff. My question to you is, is that valid? Well, it, the, the criticism is valid. It is a culture of intimidation. It's the federal government using grossly excessive force in order to resolve a dispute that you and I as lawyers know and people watching us now should understand can be resolved by filing some pieces of paper in a courthouse. Instead of filing some pieces of paper in a courthouse called a lien, the government says that it owes him money and a court order validated that, you file the lien on the property. And when he passes away, the government gets to collect. When he sells the property, the government gets to collect. One of those events must eventually happen, and the government can certainly exist until the money passes to it. Mm -hmm. Instead, they are showing up with an army pointing M-16s not only at Mr. Bundy and his family members, but at his friends, at people there to protest, to exercise the First Amendment rights, at Fox News, and at other news entities there trying to take pictures of them. That's what made this so hair-trigger-like is the gross, unacceptable, 
unlawful accumulation of firepower there mm -hmm. in order to enforce a judicial decree. It's not the first time we've seen this. I mean, Fox News covered the uh, raid on the Gibson guitar facilities oh in Tennessee, my. where we had agents armed with semi-automatic weapons, bulletproof vests, storming in over a piece of illegal wood that Gibson was using it in its guitars. Uh, they were criticized for their behavior on a family-owned mining operation in Alaska for heavily armed federal agents raiding that. We've seen some heavy-handed tactics, you know, in fact, in terms of these raids, and then we've seen it, you know, at a more broad level in terms of the IRS, the DOJ going after reporters, the NSA spying on us. I mean, it's, it's big government run amok in the eyes of many. It is, it is the federal government thinking it is immune from the laws of the land, the laws of civility that govern the rest of us, even basic constitutional principles. There's a vast disconnect, not only between the federal government and people like Mr. Bundy. Remember, the government is the servant, not the master. That's in the Constitution of the Declaration of Independence. That's not a political statement. That's a value judgment in the American system. But the federal government believes, look, it, it is boasting about the fact that it has destroyed his property. Mm -hmm. The government is subject to the laws like everyone else. They destroy his property, they have to pay for it. But yet they think they can be a law unto themselves. That's why this particular case is now ground zero, Megan, for the, the, the average American who expects the government to be the servant and the federal government that thinks it can push the average American around. But let me step, let me step back a notch because he did not have the law on his side, Clive and Bundy. That's right. He had lost twice in a court of law and what binds us together if not the rule of law? So where did the feds go wrong the, having the law on their side? That's a great question. The feds blew this. They had a court order from the federal judge who issued a decree against Bundy. The Circuit Court of Appeals upheld that order. If the federal government had done this right, none of this would have happened. But they used such excessive force, such unlawful behavior, so much destruction of his property, that now the tide has turned against them. Public opinion is clearly against them. They had to back down because their, their, their behavior was indefensible at the at the scene they were saying you can't even protest unless you go three miles away from here and stand inside a piece of uh, tape right so when the government loses control of the situation because of its own heavy-handedness it's going to cause whatever court will look at this again and you know it's going to go back to court to look at it very differently and the government now has the losing hand